we, yes, sir. We're praying for her, and we hope it, that that don't happen. We pray for Miss Gertie. She, she's a sweet. We love Miss Gertie and love Brother Dan. We appreciate them. And you pray for Miss Gertie that her eye don't go. She just got one that they can work on and needs to be able to see. Amen. And so you pray for her. All right. Turn your Bibles if you would to First Peter chapter number one. First Peter chapter one. I, I just want to be a blessing to you tonight. I hope it is. And uh, just something the Lord placed upon my heart. First Peter chapter 1, look in verse 6. Let's all stand while we read God's precious word. You know, I wish people could understand that this is a love letter. This King James Bible is a love letter from God to us. And uh, Brother Don, if you wrote a letter to your wife, you wouldn't want it to go through me first and then me change some stuff in it just to make sure uh, it says what you want it to. This letter says what God wants it to say. And we don't have permission to change it. And when you change it, it don't mean the same thing. And so I'm thankful that we have the King James Bible, the mind of God, the breath of God. And so he speaks to us. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Let me say something right here. Peter is writing to the church and he's telling them that Jesus is coming. We're going to go through trials. See, that bunch believes that you're not going to go through any trials, that everything's a bed of roses when you get saved. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we will go through trials. Sister, you're just in the hospital. And uh, Miss Kathy's mom, mother went home. Those are trials that we have to go through my father died a year and a half ago and that's trials that you have to go through we're all going to go through trials until Jesus comes so uh, don't let this bunch fool you that uh, just because we go through trials don't mean that we're not saved we're saved and because we're saved we see Christ in it and we see that one day we'll have a rejoicing time now listen to this in verse number 8 whom having not seen you love, in whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to come and be here tonight and preach your word. We pray that you give us unction tonight and help for those that hear. We pray that you would have let us have an ear to hear and that all that is said and done here tonight would be to Help the saints of God. I pray that you'd help us now. Be with us and guide us in all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to bring a short message tonight on why Christians are happy. <laughs> Joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's a fountainhead of this joy that's found in the Bible. It's found in verse 8. There's a fountainhead. And that fountainhead is what keeps it bubbling up in our soul. Notice what he says. Where is the fountainhead? The Bible says, in whom yet believing. The fountainhead is in a person, Christ Jesus. The Bible says, Christ in you hope, the hope of glory. And because Christ lives in us, there's a fountainhead 
of rejoicing and joy that's always bubbling up. One preacher said it this way, when you look at in whom and yet believing, it's the long arms of faith that we have wrapped around our Savior and we keep them wrapped around our Savior and He keeps His arms wrapped around us. And so we have a fountainhead in whom? In Christ. And we believe that with all of our heart. Now you can hear the gospel and you can hear the word of God and not believe it. But if you don't believe it, you're not saved. Yet believing. We've not seen Him, yet we believe Him. We've not heard Him. We've not put our eyes on Him. But we believe Him by faith. And so there's the fountainhead. Then the Bible says that we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. One preacher said it was like this. It's deep. Joy unspeakable. It's too deep to touch the bottom. We, we don't have words, Brother Don, to explain the joy that we have. When someone's uh, uh, loved one dies and we're standing there with the casket and we know that their soul is no longer in their body, we have something so deep that we can't explain why we have this rejoicing. When Kathy's mother died, her brother came in the room and he said, we're, we've been set free. She's been set free and we've been set free. Joy, unspeakable. We don't listen. If I were to ask each one of you and go around the room and ask you to explain grace, you can't explain it. You can say you've experienced it. You can, you can tell how that God loves you, but we cannot explain grace. It's joy unspeakable. It's too deep <laughs> to touch the bottom. And then the Bible says it's full of glory. It's too wide to reach the other side. It's too wide to reach. We'll never get to the end of the glory of God. He has, he has let us have inside our souls, He's let us have something that's too deep to touch the bottom and too wide to reach the other side. Brother Donnie, you'll never, in your, how many years you've been saved? 40, 40 years you've been saved, you've never, you've never touched the bottom and you've never got to the other side. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And so Peter is trying to tell the church uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as God breathed this to the church and, and is telling them, listen, we've not seen Christ, but we believe that there is a Christ. We believe that He saved us. We put our faith and trust in Him. And because of that, it gives us great joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory. Let me look at a couple of things tonight and we'll, we'll, we'll finish. We have joy in our Savior. We don't have joy in ourselves. Miss Kathy uh, said some things, nice things about me, and, but I'm going to tell you something. It, had it not been for Christ, I wouldn't have been over there with Miss Kathy. When I was lost, I didn't love anybody. I didn't love anybody. I barely loved my wife. When I was lost, I didn't care about anybody. Didn't, didn't have any compassion about anybody. But when the, when the Lord Jesus Christ saved me, He let me fall in love with Him and the saints of God. And so, and so by grace, and we can love our Savior. And because we love our Savior, we can love each other. Amen? Listen. The first church I pastored was, was pretty mean to me. I'm not trying to get you sympathy. I'm just telling you I'm over that now. But they were mean to me. And some of the very people that were mean to me called me when they were dying and asked me to come and preach their funeral. You know what people said to me? I wouldn't go. But you know what? I forgave them a long time ago and loved them because I loved the Lord and had great joy in going and preaching their funeral. You know, we don't, listen, we have a love for our Savior. And because we love our Savior, it brings us great joy. It's, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen? John chapter 17, verse 13, And now uh, come I to thee, this is Christ praying, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. We have the very joy of Christ in our hearts. And so we ought to be happy people. Amen? We ought to be happy people. Then there's the joy of His presence. 
I tell you what, I'm, I'm like Brother Eddie. I don't want to come here with my shoes on. I want to come here and feel the presence of, of God every time we come. We will not worship unless He's present. We won't. Christ ought to not just be welcome here, ought to be expected here. And we ought to want to come and feel His presence. I'm going to tell you something, in that tabernacle, they built that tabernacle and behind that veil where nobody could go, uh, the priest went one time a year for the atonement and I imagine all the people gathered around just to see if they could get near the presence of God. The presence of God. I'm going to tell you, Monday night, the pres- he's here tonight. But the Monday night, Brother Don, I, I closed my eyes. I was expecting to look up any time and see him. He was here. People could feel it. Everybody could feel it. He was here. He's here tonight. And we, all, we have joy because he is present. He said, I'm a very present help <laughs> in trouble. He's here. He was in the hospital room. He's wherever we are because we carry him with us. We have joy because of the presence of God. I'd hate to go to a church where the presence of God wasn't there. I'm going to tell you something. We've had some services. You know I'm telling you the truth. We've had services here where he wasn't present. And we don't ever want that. I, I, hey, listen to me. You all need to understand something. We have a junior church, and, th- and that's fine. And the bus kids go out there sometimes. That's fine. But sometimes if I feel the presence of God, I want them to stay over here. I want them to see and feel what we're feeling. Amen. I want them to see people happy. I want them to see people crying and testifying and singing because they love the Lord. We have joy because of His presence. Amen. A joy unspeakable and full of glory. But not only that, uh, listen to this. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 28, Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. We have joy when we pray. Miss Kathy just told you some things uh, uh, that happened in her family. And I've got the list right here. And Ronnie Bryant is on this list. Heath getting a job is on this list. We have joy that we, and God has answered many more that's on this list. And when we get together, I'm going to tell you something. There's some people that I believe is not right with God. And, and, and they'll come and they'll say, well, that list is too long and you're taking too much time. These these names on this list are important to the people here. And we pray. We earnestly pray for these people. We've actually at times split them up and prayed for them individually. And we pray for these people. If a church can't pray, something's wrong. Joy in hearing that Ronnie Bryant got saved. Amen. Now we're not going to mark him off the list. We're going to leave him on there and say Ronnie Bryant needs to find a good church. He don't need to get mixed up in the same mess as other families in. He needs to find a good Bible-believing church. I seen on a sign the other day, go to a church of your choice. That is applesauce. You go to a church that's biblically correct. Amen? When you're, not, when you're a newborn babe in Christ, you'll go anywhere. Thank God for grace that He put me in a good church, a Bible-believing church that preaches the Bible and, and, and helped me. What a mess. I'd, I'd have been just like them, I'm sure. I was all into music. I would have been spiky-haired and singing all that mess too and saying all that stuff and reading the wrong Bible. But thank God for grace. I've got joy in that somebody was praying for me and I got in the right church. Amen. We take prayer seriously. Amen. We don't believe this is just a bunch of talking. Deborah Norton, right there, Deborah Norton. We're praying for the people of this church, their families. And God's answering those prayers. Don't that bring you joy and hope? Amen. Jerry, Jerry Sneed's on that list. Your parents are on that list. My daughter is on that list. My daughter's been coming more. Thank God for that. She ain't right yet, but it's coming. We're praying for her. Joy in praying. Do you, do you like to pray? I enjoy, I enjoy praying. I don't like a bunch of nonsense, but I like serious praying. Amen? Getting a hold of God. And listen, we've got new folks coming. God's bringing us new life in the church. Had a little girl get saved the other night. We're going to get to baptize somebody. Amen! Joy in praying. The Housleys are on this list. 
They were here every night during the revival. Now tell me God ain't in that. God's in that. I'm going to tell you something else if Jeremy will allow me. Jeremy called me the other night, and I won't go into great detail. He said, Preacher, I almost missed the will of God. He said, I almost left, and I almost missed the will of God. Jeremy went over and made things right between him and the Housleys, and that's why they were here, and that's why that little girl got saved. Now tell me it don't matter about us praying. It matters. Now Jeremy's asked God to forgive him for that, and he called and tell, told me, and he's asked me to forgive him for that, and, and it was already forgiven. Amen? God wants us to pray for these people. Hey, Larry Rue's on this list. Lauren and Colton's on this list. They have, they have some struggles at home, you know, with their, their mom and stuff, and they're on this list. Your daughter's on this list, and she rededicated her life. Boy, joy in praying. Brings me great joy. Brings you great joy. Folks are sitting around the room right now crying. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Not only do we have joy in praying, but we have joy in fellowship. Joy in fellowship. I'm going to tell you something that we don't do enough. We don't fellowship enough. We used to go places together and do things together, and we've stopped doing that. Why did we do that? Well, we need to make time. Amen? Hey, go to Fall Creek Falls and, and spend a Saturday together. Come over to preacher's house and have a picnic. We didn't do that last year. Play music and, and sit around and sing and love one another. Hey, have the pastor over for supper. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> but you could. <laughs> hey, hey, let me give you another one. Have one of the members. Me and Brother Donald sitting in the funeral home uh, the other night, and he said, Preacher, we don't, we don't do things like we used to. Let's get together and do something. I'm all for that. Hey, get, grab a hold of not, one of the other members and say, let's go eat together. Hey, there's two members sitting right here, and I'll tell you who they are. It's Trampas Rue and Jeremy Crisp. They didn't even think they liked each other until they started fellowshipping. And both of them had told me on the phone, hey, I like him. I like him. You know what? We need to fellowship together. Fellowship's not just eating, by the way. That's just Baptist thinking. Fellowship's sometimes just sitting down talking to one another. Amen? Just sitting down talking to one another, getting to know one another. You know what? I, I was thinking just a while ago. Miss Kathy's been coming here seven years. Seven years probably. And she's talked about all of her brothers and sisters, but I didn't know who she's talking about. You know what? I know, I know them now. I know who they are. I can put faces on them. I, 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 I kind of know their... Their, their ways and stuff. Now, Miss Pam, she was such a blessing. I, we've been praying so much. She's on the list. We've been praying for her. What a blessing. Fellowship. Get to know one another. Amen. I love it when I come and everybody's talking before we get here and then before we leave, everybody's still talking. And I'm, I'm having to say, I'm going to go home. Y'all leave. I, I fixed that. I just got somebody else shut the door. Amen. Listen to this, Romans 15, 32, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God and may with you be refreshed. It's refreshing to get to know the saints of God. Amen. Amen. Amen, preacher. The joy of bearing fruit. Boy, it did my heart good to see that little girl crying up here. I'll tell you what I don't do. Listen to me, I don't. And this will bring you comfort when it comes to your children. Everybody here will tell you the truth. I don't get kids up here and say, you say this and you're saved. I don't get kids up here and them pray by themselves and me tell them they're saved. They got to tell me. They got to tell me. But when you get a little girl her age up here and she just heard a message on the great white throne and big tears are coming down of her eyes and she said, I don't want to be cast off in the lake of fire. 
And you take the Bible and she's ahead of you all through the Bible saying yes. And I'm going to tell you something else. Listen to me. I, I took her to Romans 3.23 and she said it with me. You know where she learned that? I took her to Romans 5.8 and she said it with me. She, meant, she had it in her head and her heart. She knew the scripture. The Holy Ghost was stirring it that day. She got saved. Hey man. Hey man. I done forgot where I am. Oh, bearing fruit. Bearing fruit. We need to see more. Fruit. This, listen to me. This ought to be a, I've said this many times. This ought to be a birthing center. This ought to be a place where people come and hear the gospel and have an open invitation to come and be saved. This ought, that, that ought to be the atmosphere here. Brother Inko told me this morning, said, boy, you preach salvation, don't you? I said, you better believe I do. I, I believe folks ought to be saved, amen? I believe the greatest problem in the church and the greatest problem in the world is that folks aren't saved. And we ought to be fruit-bearing, amen? We ought to be fruit-bearing. We ought to be uh, uh, seeing folks saved, Amen? John 15, 11 says this, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? One day we're going to give an account for the souls that were saved. Let me give you this. The joy of hardships. I used this once before out of Romans chapter 5, a tribulation. The word tribulation comes from the word tribulum. And some of you o o older folks that uh, was raised on a farm might can remember the old tribulum that was a, like a swing sickle, but it had a lot of blades on it, and you could take it through wheat, and, it, and the chafe would blow away, and the wheat would stay in, the seed would stay in there. That's a tribulum. God, last time I preached this, I got sick for a month. God sometimes puts us on our back and puts us through the tribulum so the chafe will fly away. And only that which is good stays. There's joy in hardships. There's joy. Listen, listen. James chapter 1 verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers, which means different types of temptations. One preacher said, a faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. Trials bring joy. There was, uh, one preacher said this, it's like this, it's like the prospector that's digging in the, in the, in the mine and he brings a little sample of ore in and it's tested. And the, the examiner looks up and says, that's got gold in it. You know what he does? He gives that prospector a certificate. And the certificate is worth more than the little chunk of gold. You know why? It means there's more riches to follow. And the Bible says that he takes us through tribulations that we might have more, more in the, in the future, more. Uh, uh, we, we might know Christ. Paul said that I might know him. Amen? And the power of His resurrection. Christ had to die before He resurrected. And so Paul said, I want to know Him in those things. And so uh, this woman one time was sick and she had a terrible disease and her pastor came to see her. He sat down beside her and he said, How you doing? She said, Oh, I'm fine. She said, Every day this little robin comes by and sits on my windowsill and he sings for me. And she said, I just love him. He said, well, that's wonderful. He said, sister, I, I would say some other birds come by and sing. She said, yeah, they do. But she said, that little robin's the only one that comes when it's raining. We can sing when it's raining because we have joy. There's a man in a wheelchair one time across the road singing. The preacher was handing out tracts and he heard him singing. Had a beautiful voice. He went across the road and he said, Sir, I just have to tell you, you've been a blessing to me today singing. He said, Sir, years ago, 
He said, I stopped crying over what I lost and started rejoicing over what I have left. Hardships bring joy. Miss Kathy, you was able to stand up there with some joy in your heart because you know where your mama's at. And it don't matter, it don't matter, you know, how other people act. We have joy that nobody can steal out. Amen? Through hardships. Hardships brings those times of joy. And we know that there's a good time coming. One day we, we rejoice in this, and one day you're going to see your mama again. You're going to rejoice with your mama. She's up there uh, having a time of her life. And there's rejoicing in hardships. Then the last thing, there's the joy of the resurrection. Listen to this. John 16, 22. And ye know therefore, you, and ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy no man taketh from you. Christ has not just promised us salvation. He's promised us a resurrection. I believe in the rapture. I believe that one day there's going to be a shout. There's going to be a trumpet sound. And we're all, Brother Donnie said, they moved our reunion <laughs> to heaven. And one day we're going to have a great time. Brother Earl's going to be up there waiting on us. Amen. Brother, Jan Brother uh, uh, Gaither's going to be up there with us. He's waiting on us. And one day when we get there, we're all going to rejoice together. Amen. Are you glad you're saved tonight? Do you have joy unspeakable and full of glory? Listen, folks. I need you to understand something. When Noah got off the ark, God told him, there will always be a springtime, there will always be a summer, there will always be a fall, and there will always be a winter. When Job was going through his trials, all of his friends said, boy, you must have sinned bad. You must, you must have done something terrible. You know, I've, I've had friends like that, and you have too. But he had one friend that came and said, Job, you're in the winter time of your life. Springtime's coming. Springtime's coming. Sometimes we go through things we don't understand why. Springtime's coming. God said it will always come. There's always going to be winter times in the church. Amen? Always. Springtime's coming. We got a little glimpse of springtime Wednesday night when that little girl got saved. I want to see more. Amen? Life. Life. Joy unspeakable. I don't know if this helped anybody, but it helped me. Full of glory. Too deep to touch the bottom, too wide to reach the other side. How about you? Are you glad you're saved tonight? You know what would be good? If the church just came up tonight with rejoicing in their heart. I'm talking about everybody here. If you're saved, just come get in the altar and say thank you. How long has it been since you said thank you? How long, it, how, how long has it been since you've been up here and didn't say, Lord, I want anything. I just come up to thank you. I'm not got my hand out. I just... I want to thank you. Don't we, don't we owe him a thank you? How about you? I'm going to ask everybody to come that would. And let's just get around the altar and thank him tonight for how good he is.